Good morning, Delaware. I hope you're having a good day, better than I am after they blew me out of the water with the Little Drummer Boy challenge. Oh, <laughs> that's cruel. Mark and Sherry, there you know there are consequences to actions. <laughs> I have no idea what those might be, but <laughs> anyway, if I had to hear Bob Seger, or if I had to hear the Little Drummer Boy, Bob Seger's the one to hear. I love Christmas music so much that I will not participate in the Little Drummer Boy Challenge because why would I eliminate a Christmas song from the repertoire? I can think of a few. Do you? I mean, like, do you like the Chipmunks Christmas song? Yep, it's pleasant. <laughs> <laughs> okay. There is always there's a time no discernment and a here, Nicole. <laughs> anyway, so uh, but you know if I'm if I don't sound quite myself this morning, it's because I stayed up to watch the Blue Jackets game last night. Mm. What a great game! I loved it. Uh, seven shootouts to get to a winner, and they finally won. So it was a, a great game in in Arizona. So a, a delightful game to watch. So our guest today, um, if you were listening to the teaser for the show. Uh, is not actually Wendy Foos, because when I got here to the station, I saw Andy Bartlett, uh, who is the assistant branch manager of the Delaware Library for Youth Services. Good morning, Andy. Good morning, George. Thanks for having me. Well, thanks for filling in on very short notice. Uh, our Wendy is, was not able to come in because of some family illness, so I uh, hope everybody gets better real fast, Wendy, Wendy and uh, we, we will have you on again shortly. But uh, we are going to talk a little bit this morning about bookbusters. We're going to talk a little bit about the Dash for Dancer, and we're just going to talk about some great things that are coming up to the library to start celebrating the holidays. So, uh, how are you doing this morning, Nicole? Well, I'm good. Last night I attended Main Street Delaware's Friendsgiving, ah. and um, it was in the uh, downtown with no electricity. <laughs> <laughs> um, but as I suspected, it was in Gather on uh, North Sandusky, and it was beautifully decorated with many, many candles, and uh, it was actually rather, rather intimate and beautiful. Oh, so, that's great. Yes. So I might not be sounding like myself because of just a whole <laughs> evening with friends. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, you know, that's a beautiful idea, that, that, that Friendsgiving. Yeah. It's a really nice idea. It was so, great. It was and, delicious. Uh, oh, my gosh. The best turkey I've ever had. And you, I believe, are going back onto the Main Street board, aren't you? I am. Yeah, I will be great. installed in the uh, annual meeting in January. When I started at the library back in 2015, you were on, I think you were the chair or the president of the board then. Yep. So. I've been it all. <laughs> <laughs> and then they booted me for two years and told me I had to leave because of the, you know, bylaws. Right. And then, oh, bylaws. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but that's a great organization. They yeah. do so much good stuff for downtown. And uh, just, just delighted uh, to, to have them here. And I also know that Susie Bibbler is going to be on the board of the Rotary Club. Oh, uh, I was exciting. on the nominating committee, and she accepted a, a, a board seat, so she'll be starting that in uh, July next year. Oh, that's great! So, anyway, let's 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 talk about the let's library. Talk about since, books. Yeah, we're talking about Main Street. We're talking about the the Rotary. It's about time we talk about the library. So, sure. what are you reading? I see you have a, a natural paper you know dead uh dead dinosaurs or um yeah dead dinosaurs on dead trees book in front of you this one i um owe the library money for because they probably have replaced it because i've had it for so long but um way back in the spring my husband and i decided that we were going to take our stimulus money and we were going to use it to support um some things that you know have not really been su well supported during uh, the pandemic which is the arts mm -hmm. and so we bought season tickets for the broadway across america season that comes to columbus broadway in columbus and the opener, which is in the Ohio Theater this week, is Hades Town. Have you seen it? It's amazing. Yes, we're I, seeing it tonight. I saw it. On, <laughs> I saw it on Wednesday night. Oh. It was amazing. This the book that I have today is called "Working on a Song: The Lyrics of Hades Town." It's by Anais Mitchell, who is the um, the writer, author, songwriter um, in the show. And so this book is, um, we only had one copy in the Central Library Consortium, so I'm sorry if anyone else wanted it, but I wanted it more. And, <laughs> <laughs> and um, I, sh I should probably just end up buying it. But what it does is um, the, the writer basically takes you through, it is the libretto of the entire musical. It is a, um, is a musical all in song. And um, so it takes you through and it's got each song and the text and the character who sings it. Um, and so you can you can read the text of each song. And then at the end of it, then it has notes written by the you know original writer of the show. It goes it takes you on a tour from off Broadway to Edmonton and London, where they did um, some more off Broadway trials to Broadway. And it talks about. Um, some of the lyrics and how they changed, some of the struggles that they had in putting the show together. Um, it's, it really focuses on the story and not so much on the staging 
or the costuming or the even the a lot of the musicality. But it, if you don't know it, it's the story of Orpheus and Eurydice, the Greek. Um, the Greek story. It's a Greek tragedy. And then it also throws in the story of Hades and Persephone. And so the, the main idea is, is that um, Hades lives in the underworld. Um, he has kind of his, his people, his minions who work in Hades town. Um, he, the story is told that he one day came up to earth and he found Persephone picking flowers in her mother's garden. And in the musical, I know the Greek myth is a little bit different, but in the musical, they fall in love she goes and lives with him in the underworld, but um, her mother is so sad that she doesn't that she's gone that her mother says no flower will bloom until you return. So um, they strike a deal, and uh, Persephone lives in Hades town um, six months of the year, and then comes back to Earth the other six month, months of the year. Thus, the seasons. Ah. And then we have the parallel story of Orpheus and Eurydice. Orpheus is the son of a muse, and he has the gift of uh, song, and when he sings, he awakens, you know, flowers and stones and everything like that, um, and poetry. I think the muse is the muse of poetry, and he's the son of. Um, and Eurydice is um, kind of just a girl who he falls in love with, and um, he's working on his song. They're falling in love. Um, they don't see that in the musical, again, this is different from the myth, in the musical, a storm's a Bruin, and um, it takes her, and she um, is on the brink of death, and she strikes a deal with Hades. And so Orpheus then decides that he will go to Hades town to rescue her. And so it's the story of their love, the awakening of the gods. Um, it's amazing. I can't even, <laughs> I, I was so moved. I was so moved to be in live theater. I was so moved to... Um, what I why I picked up this book primarily though is because I needed to brush up on my Greek mythology. I did not know um, all of the stories. I I didn't want to be confused when I saw the musical, and so um, this was a really good way to get that. But also all the behind the scenes of how the songs made their journeys. Okay, for somebody who doesn't know a lot about Greek mythology, um, maybe me. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Am I going to be lost during this thing? No, you'll catch on. Okay. Um, you just you could read this afterward, and you could see like, oh, I that's that was an interesting choice. You know, like one of the things that the author says that she struggles with is that um, Orpheus was not a likable character. He came across kind of like pushy and chauvinistic, and you didn't really understand why the audience would root for him. Um, so she really struggled with finding ways to make the audience root for him. And so you kind of get that journey along the way. And they're just other little behind the scenes pieces, but you'll pick it up. Great. Thank you. Yes. And also I will put a note in that um, in not only do, did we have, there are a couple more books in the, in the catalog now <laughs> of uh, the working on a song, Hades town, but then also if you subscribe to Hoopla, you can download the entire Hades town soundtrack on Hoopla. Oh, great. Very good. Thank you. Andy, I know this was short notice. Did you have something you wanted to talk about in terms of a book or something you're listening to or something? I do. I do. Oh, great. So um, I've actually just started this book yesterday. I've been waiting for it for a while. I've been on hold for a while, and I needed to read something funny. I've been reading some more serious things on some more serious topics lately, and I needed something that was light and funny. So I am reading, and I have to look at my notes for the title because it is long, <laughs> The Midwest Survival Guide, How We Talk, Love, <laughs> Work, Drink, and Eat Everything with Ranch. By Charlie <laughs> Barons. So Charlie Barons, if you're not familiar with him, he is a YouTube personality. He has a lot of uh, funny videos um, related to being from, living in, growing up in the Midwest. He's from Wisconsin, has a po uh, podcast called The Manitowoc Minute. Very funny guy. Uh, some of my favorites, are, some of my favorites of his videos are School of Ope. So. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if you're in the Midwest, if you're from the Midwest and you're like you bump into somebody or you're kind of like going by. the same direction, it's kind of like that. Oh, just going to squeeze right past you there. That kind of thing. <laughs> so he is he is hilarious. Um, I'm really enjoying it so far. And one of the things that I wanted to highlight that's in the book that really struck me because we're kind of headed into the holiday season here and large gatherings with our families is the Midwest Goodbye. <laughs> so I'm just going to read the steps of the Midwest goodbye here. Please. And I have to preface this by saying that um, my father-in-law and my, my wife said that I could name dro could drop him here. <laughs> he grew up in Long Island and he has no patience for the Midwest goodbye. He just gets in the car. He's like, all right, we're gone. Let's go. He does the Irish um, goodbye. And then, yeah, he, absolutely. So there are some Wait steps to the Midwest <laughs> goodbye. Step one, announce you plan to leave oh. round one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> announce you plan to leave round two. <laughs> Step three, accept invite to stay for another coffee, piece of pie, whatever. Step four, repeat steps two and three. <laughs> Step five, refuse gifts. 
you will be handed vegetables, pies, old gardening equipment, etc. You'll have to politely <laughs> turn these down and be like, oh, no, no, we've got plenty of those at home. <laughs> Next step, accept gifts. <laughs> Next step. Announce you plan to leave round three. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Stand in the doorway and talk for another 20 to 30 minutes. And he says this is where the real conversation begins. <sighs> Stand on the porch and talk for another 30 to 40 minutes. Stand in driveway and talk for 15 to 45. Get in the car. Talk for another 15 to 45, either sitting in the car, leaning on the car. Then leave. This is my entire experience <laughs> trying to leave my in-laws. <laughs> I grew up in the Midwest, and I do not, I, I don't have time for the Midwest. Goodbye. <laughs> that this, is, this is our family Christmas gathering every year um, on both my side of the family and my wife's side of the family. So I thought that was funny. I'm really, I think I'm really going to enjoy this book. And check him out on YouTube. He is hysterical. My favorite one actually is the Midwest Driving School video. Um, he kind of, he, he was popular. He kind of became popular or be a little more widespread online during the pandemic, kind of like him, the Holderness family, uh, do dad, if you've ever seen any of their videos and, uh, they've actually done some uh, collaborations as well. So that's amazing. I'm that, enjoying that it. That explains the, uh, uh, the reason our cast party that we had last Saturday for the show that Joyce was in went until two in the morning, right? Because we were doing that goodbye for about the last hour and a half of the <laughs> right. party, yeah. So, and c including giving away some beer that yeah. I didn't really want. That that the and I, oh no, you take that. No, I I've got plenty of beer. No, no, please, I'll never drink it. No, oh well, okay. <laughs> so, Annie, thank thank you, Annie. Again, what was the what's the the gentleman's name? Who's Charlie Barons? Charlie Barons. Charlie Barons, Midwest Survival Guide. Great, That's thank awesome. you. So um, a couple of weeks ago, we had uh, Mandy Henning from the uh, the Powell Branch on the uh, on with us, and she was talking about NPR Chronicles about the Civil War. And so I had to drive up to Cleveland last week, and so I had downloaded one of the other NPR Chronicles, also off of uh, Hoopla. So I got that for right away, and it's uh, on the First Ladies. It was done in 2015. Narrated by the late Cokie Roberts, who also wrote the book Founding Mothers about some of the key women of the birth of the United States. And what, what these NPR Chronicles is, is a set of stories around a single theme. So the Civil War one is not a through story about the Civil War. First Ladies doesn't start with uh, Martha Washington and go straight through to uh, Jill Bri Biden. Rather, it's, uh, it's highlights about stories that they have done over the years dealing with the First Ladies. And, and some of my favorites, some of the, the were, were about... First ladies who aren't as well known, and some some more famous ones. Uh, I like the one about Martha Washington um, because it it was about an artist who specializes in doing unofficial portraits of the presidents and first ladies, and so she depicts Martha as this vivacious twenty six year old widow who she was when she met George Washington, uh, rather than the kind of the doer, unsmiling lady that we always see in the formal portraits. Uh, and another story about her fleshes out the relationship that she had with George, especially during the Revolution. Apparently, Martha followed the troops and acted almost like a camp nurse and kind of a, just uh, helped uh, write letters for some of her soldiers who were wounded and things like that and was really much more involved than you, you, I had ever known before I heard that story. One of the lesser-known first ladies that she talks about is Jane Pierce, uh, who was the, the wife of Franklin Pierce. She's probably the most tragic, maybe except for Mary Lincoln of the 19th century mothers. She lost two of her three children before Pierce was elected as president mm. uh, but by disease. Then when she and her remaining son were taking the train from New Hampshire to, to, to the District of Columbia, the train wrecked and her son was killed in the train wreck. Mm -hmm. um, she spent the rest of the, her time in the White House in the residence as almost a hermit writing letters of apology to her dead son. No, I know. It was just such a sad mm. story. Uh, Mary Lincoln is represented in here by an interview with uh, Sally Field, who played Mrs. Lincoln in Steven Spielberg's movie um, Lincoln. Mm. Uh, she talks about how she and Daniel Day-Lewis stayed in character throughout the whole pre-production of the movie and through the filming and how much research it took for her to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. uh, talks about Nan Harding, Ohio's own, who uh, apparently did not actually poison her husband, uh, which has been rumored for for at least uh, 70 or 80 years. <laughs> Um, instead, she's seen as being kind of the ambitious, brilliant brains behind the her genial but not too bright husband uh, who became president mainly because he was so good looking and it was the first year women could vote. That's, a, again, was a long time <laughs> stereotype about what happened with, with Harding. Um, but he he she kind of accepted his failings as as collateral damage so she could become as uh, the first lady. So. Uh, this volume was released in 2015, so it doesn't include Melania Trump or Jill Biden. 
Uh, it's about three and a half hours long, so it's perfect for uh, any road trip. And if there's somebody you're really not interested in, you can skip ahead because it's, it is broken down into these stories. Uh, it's avail- available free, uh, not on Hoopla, excuse me. It's on the Ohio Digital Library via the Libby app. So uh, enjoy that. It's the uh, NPR Chronicles, the First Ladies. So we're going to take a break here. We'll be back with Andy Bartlett to talk about some of our uh, youth services programs that are coming up this uh, holiday season. So stay tuned. Welcome back to Off the Shelf. Uh, we have a, a not a correction, but an addition. I did get the uh, first uh, the NPR First Ladies uh, NPR Chronicles First Ladies on the Ohio Digital Library, but. Uh, uh, Nicole checked, and they're also available on Hoopla, which means there's no wait for them. And they have a lot more titles than the Ohio Digital Library does. So if you're interested in these things, they had uh, titles on on Vietnam and some other things that uh, would have they would have covered rights, over the years. Civil rights, women's equality, right? Yep. So uh, again, they're all they all run about three to four hours, and they're they're just perfect for car trips. So anyway, uh, yeah. all right. Now that that's been corrected, welcome Andy. <laughs> Andy, you. as I mentioned earlier, is the assistant branch manager of the Delaware Library for Youth Services. And so let's talk. Let's start with Bookbusters. I love this concept. I I think it's just such a cool idea. So I'll give you a little bit of background into how Bookbusters got started. I want to say it was, I guess, about a year ago, maybe last fall, we had a request from one of our young patrons who said, hey, you know, I noticed that you guys have book clubs for adults. I noticed that you have a middle school book club. What about a book club for kids in elementary school? So the idea of Bookbusters was born. It started out uh, virtually. Uh, It's uh, aimed at kids in second through fourth grade. Uh, We've read books so far like The Boxcar Children, Wayside School, uh, Fantastic Mr. Fox, and we actually had the kids got to see a real live fox for that one, which was really neat. That was our first in-person um, so we are going to be in person again on Monday, December 6th, 6 o'clock at the Delaware Main Library, uh, reading uh, Nutcracked by Susan Adrian. That's a take on the Nutcracker. And there's going to be a special guest from the Delaware Arts Castle, a ballerina, to talk to the kids about the art of ballet. So we're really excited about that. Uh, Melissa from the Orange Branch and I are going to be uh, coordinating that program, and we're very excited. That's so fun. I love the idea, too, that this idea came from one of the kids who wanted to be in a book club. Yeah. Absolutely. Everybody else could be in a book club. I, I know how to read now. Why shouldn't I be in a book club? Absolutely. Book club, right? <laughs> how can you say no to that? <laughs> exactly, yeah. And, and wasn't the first, was the Boxcar Children her pick? Boxcar Children, yes, that, that is correct. So the, for the first session, because it was her idea to start the book club, I approached her and I said, hey, why don't you, why don't you, choose from these choices and she picked the boxcar children and had a great discussion and it's it's been great ever since that was one of my favorite series as a child it hadn't been written when i was a child i'm sorry i know (laughs) 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 oh well you know we were still dealing with papyrus and slates slate slabs at that point wasn't it hard erasing (laughs) the uh yeah the calligraphy ink (laughs) from your Yeah, that's a, it's it's been a while. So anyway, <laughs> I, I told Frank Baum, yes, write that book about Oz. You're really going to get a lot of traction out of that. Right. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, what else is happening in in youth services for ki- for kids coming up uh, in the next few weeks? Because I know with the holidays, we've got some interesting stuff coming. Absolutely. So the the main thing coming up is our annual winter reading club. So mm-hmm. that's going to start at the beginning of December. It's going to run through the end of February, and it's going to run just like we've done it in the past. Uh, It's for kids through adults, uh, and there are uh, prize baskets that you can win. So you come into the library uh, starting next week, uh, get a bookmark. Um, Once you have read four books, you fill out your bookmark, turn it in, put it in the box for the basket you want to win, and then we'll do a drawing at the end of February. And uh, I've seen the baskets. They're starting to be a... The, the finishing touches are being put on them, I should say, this yeah. week. They're not starting. we got to get these out soon. Um, and, and looks good, as always. Some really, really great prizes for kids, teens, and adults. Yeah, yeah I was at Orange this week, and I saw them in the back room, and they look really good. They're, they're coming along really nicely. Right. So. The um – the what do I want to say? Oh, programs count too. It's books and programs. Oh, you're right. Absolutely. Yeah, yep. So, so if you attend a program, that counts for that counts for a line too. You fill that out, read a book, fill that out, and then once you get to four per bookmark, and you can do as many bookmarks as you want between December and February, just ups your chance. So of read like crazy to stuff the, ba- uh, the to stuff the raffle box. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. we don't really care. Increase your right. odds. <laughs> it's also you know it's kind of fun too. We we really wanted to keep it simple with the winter reading club, and a lot of times we were like, oh, is it are there rules? Do you sign up? Do you, you know, if you're 12, you can only enter for the teen basket. But we were like, why? Why why, why not? You know, so if you're if you're an adult and you're reading, you could put your bookmark in the adult 
basket or if you really want to win it for your, you know, preschool aged, you know, grandchild, then you could put it in the preschool basket. It doesn't matter. We don't. There's no rules. <laughs> it's a library. We want to keep it light and front, fun. Light and so. fluffy. Exactly. <laughs> so <laughs> so um, we've got a couple of things coming up this week. I want to make sure we, we had a minute to talk about them. Uh, we've got uh, on Monday night, we have Around the World in Books and Bites again, and uh, that'll be at one o'clock. It's off site, but they're going to be talking about Things You Save in a Fire mm-hmm. by Catherine Center. Mm-hmm. So that should be good. That uh, evening, we have, or I'm sorry, later that afternoon, we have a PowerPoint Basics. Yeah, there's still uh, space available. There's still space available in that one, and that is a registered event, so please sign up. That's uh, being done by our uh, Maker Annex mm-hmm. and so our Maker Studio. Studio. I'm still saying Annex, I don't know why. Uh, but that, that one, you know, if you ever have to do PowerPoint, take this class, please. I've sat through so many PowerPoints where people just <laughs> read the blooming slides and it's so boring. Yes, yes. Learn how to do some graphics. Learn how to make things move. Uh, don't use, Write your notes separately. I don't know if it's don't the do art of presentation. Don't do 400 different fonts. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, okay, enough of that. We'll see if Kellen adds some, some graphic design lessons while he's <laughs> offering that class. Uh, we want to remind you, we still have through the end of the year, I believe it is, the Library Card Wednesdays at the Veterans. Memorial downtown. Only through the 8th of December. Through the 8th of December. Right. Okay. So mm-hmm. if you bring your library card, uh, you can get free admission to the National Veterans Memorial and Museum down where Vet- Vets Memorial uh, uh, Auditorium used to be. Mm-hmm. Gorgeous place. It's, it's well worth your time for a, a visit there. Uh, and then Thursday, of course, is uh, Thanksgiving. The library will be closed, but we will be open again on Friday morning, mm-hmm. just on regular schedule. Friday and we morning. have that brief closure on Wednesday night. We close at five on Wednesday, instead right before. Of, right, instead of seven. Right so. before Thanksgiving. So right. come in right before on Wednesday, nine to five. We're closed on Thursday, and then we'll be back open again on Friday. And then a little sneak preview on Friday, De- or, I'm sorry, Saturday, December 4th, we will be having a bargain media sale from the Friends of the Library at the Orange Branch Library. That'll be all DVDs, CDs, um, Playaways, the kind of uh, uh, mobile media that you can use for books, all that sort of stuff. And there is a lot of it. Oh, there, good. You, there is a great variety. Some things even in the original wrapper. So wow. if you're looking to do some original holiday shopping, people who bought these things and then decided, oh, no, I'll just download it or never, you know, thought, uh, I really thought my wife would like this, you know, Albanian folk songs <laughs> album. And she just sort of into the into the recycling bin. <laughs> so uh, that's coming up again, 9 to 2 on uh, Saturday, December 4th. So I think we we just have time to mention that that day is also Dash for Dancer yes. downtown. Yes, so. in downtown Delaware. It starts, it begins at the Delaware Main Library, and then it is a step-by-step clue scavenger hunt. So you do have to start at the Delaware Library to get your first clue, and then we'll send you on your way from there. You can stop by the Main Library anytime between 11 and 1, but we'll talk about that more la- next, next week. Next week, right. Yeah. So Okay, so Annie, thank you so much, for especially for the late-minute pinch hitting there. That was Absolutely. really appreciated. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> Happy to be here. Thank you, Gage. Tell us on the board, as always, making us sound as good as I possibly can, which is sure. to say a lot. You sound but... great. <laughs> Thank you, Nicole. Always a pleasure. And we will hope you all have a very happy Thanksgiving, and we will see you in the stacks.